channel if you are new here my name is Heather Lewis and today we have an exciting flip for you guys this is going to be a very beginner friendly flip I haven't done a video where it's just pointing out the steps and talking about where you start and how you finish on a furniture flip so today I decided that we were gonna make this very beginner friendly someone who is just starting out flipping and wanting to learn the basic steps going to be talking about priming and how much you should prime on a specific piece whether you should prime or not we're going to be talking about paint and what colors to choose as well as top coating for you guys top, top coating is super important so i want to make sure that we get all the important information that we need in order to have a successful flip that being said we're just going to get started into this beginner friendly flip all right, so these are the two pieces that we're gonna be working on today. I do believe they are pine. You can see the knots that are on the nightstands, which if you don't know what those are, they are those black spots that have the curves in it. You can see that they're all over as well as screw holes, so we're gonna to have to fill those in. Now that we've analyzed the piece, it's time to start with the first step, which is taking out the hardware. For this project, I'm just using my screwdriver. I wanted to have use tools that you guys will already have at your home. I'm just putting the screws back into the hardware so that I don't lose it. And look how cute this hardware is. I'm definitely going to be keeping it. I think it's going to be perfect for this, um, these nightstands and the style that I'm going for. So we're going to keep on removing the hardware. With these round knobs, I find it easy to loosen up the screws with my screwdriver and then just use my hands. You can see that I'm twisting the knob. This will just give me full control because sometimes when I'm unscrewing hardware, the knob keeps twisting with it. So this way I have full control and it's easier for me to take out the hardware. Now it's very common to find things in your pieces. Today I found a cute little girl's earring. I love finding treasures in the pieces. Although this one is gonna have to be thrown away. All right, moving on to the next nightstand, we are going to be doing the same thing and taking all the hardware out. Typically at this point, I would be taking the drawers out, but as you can see here, there was something keeping it stuck inside. So I took a look and there were these plastic pieces. I haven't really run across anything like this before, but they were really easy to remove. I just took my screwdriver again and started removing those. After everything was removed, I took the drawers out and I got to cleaning. For this video, I just used water and a microfiber towel. Typically, I will use Dawn dish soap, but because this wood was bare, I wanted to be extra careful, so I just wiped it off with water and the people who had it before me said that they were fairly new, so I just so I knew just giving them a quick rinse down with regular water would be just fine. Knowing that this piece was a lot newer, there weren't many blemishes, but there were a lot of cracks from those knots. So here I am taking my color changing wood filler and a uh, putty knife. I'm just going to be filling in those knots so that there aren't any cracks. I want a really smooth finish. And I'll also be filling in those screws. I can't remove them, unfortunately, but I can at least fill in the hole that the screws create so that 
it looks like a smoother finish. And here are the screws that I was talking about. I'm just going in and filling in the hole that's in the middle of the screw so that it'll show up a lot less once the paint goes on. I put on a pretty thin layer of this wood filler so you can see here that some areas are pink and some areas are more than natural wood color. Uh, the natural wood color means that it's already dried so the stuff dries really fast. Here I am going in with my 120 grit sandpaper. I just want to make sure that it's all smooth and get all the excess off so that it is smooth to the touch. While I'm doing this, I'm also giving it a light scuff sand so that the primer and the paint can adhere to the piece. This is super important for the paint to have something to grab onto, so sanding every piece is usually a must. I decided to use a 120 grit sandpaper because it's kind of a medium grit sandpaper. When you're deciding on which grit to use, the lower the grit so 80 for example the more intense the grit is going to be and the higher the grit for example a 220 the finer the grit is going to be so it's a little bit backwards but you don't want to get that messed up because 80 grit is going to take finishes off and then the higher you go more so for doing scuff sands After hand sanding everything, I'm going back in with my wet rag and just making sure that all the dust is off. We don't want any of that going into the primer, which is going to be the next step. But before you open any wet paint, make sure that you are in fact cleaning up your area, just making sure that dust is really gone because you do not want any of that stuff in your wet paint. For priming, I'm going to be using a roller. I have a new fresh rolling pad that I'm putting onto my um, roller handle, whatever you want to call that. And my tub is kind of a mess. That's what happens when you don't clean out the primer right away. So you can see here I'm taking some tin foil and just measuring it to size and that's what I'm going to be using. It's a lot better to use this anyways, it's an easier cleanup, and you can just, once you're done with it, take it out and throw it straight into the garbage. For primer, I'm going to be using the Zinzer 123 Primer. I have a gallon size here because it's the best bang for your buck and I use a lot of it, so why not have the gallon size? Just making sure to shake it up real well so that we can pour it into our container. Now that it's been shaken up, I'm just going to pour quite a bit into this container. I would rather have a little bit more than less. If I'm in the middle of priming, I hate running out. So I'm just pouring enough into it and then you'll see that I'm going to clean off the edges um, with the roller. Now as you would on any wall, just start rolling it on until the primer is covering all of the surfaces on the outside. You don't really have to focus on the inside. You can if you want to, but I don't. Of course, don't forget about the drawers either. Those need to be primed as well. You can't forget about them. Uh, they're just as important as the body as well. Thank you. 
After the first coat of primer dried, I came in with a 120 grit sandpaper again and I give it a nice scuff sand. I wanted to make sure that everything was smooth and doing a sanding in between coats is the perfect way to keep things smooth. Again, go back in with your microfiber towel and make sure that you are wiping everything off. You don't want that to get into any of the paint that you're about to paint on it. You'll see I'm going back in with a second coat of primer. Usually I don't do this, but for this project I decided to because you can see the wood peeking through and it was yellowing a little bit so I knew that it was bleeding through the first coat of primer. With a second coat of primer I think that it'll be perfect because we are painting these white and we don't want that yellow to show through so we're just going back in and doing this process all over again. Now that we have a few coats of primer on and it has dried, I made sure to go in and do a light scuff sand once again. Again, we are trying to make this a super smooth finish. I'm going in with my Rust-Oleum Chalked in linen white paint and I'm giving it a good shake to make sure that everything is all together. And then I'm going to take my screwdriver to open it. Um, as for my paintbrush that I'm using, I'm not using a super expensive paintbrush. I'm pretty sure I got it at Lowe's for $5 to $6 and it has held up very well. I do really like the Zebra brushes though if you are looking to invest in a higher quality brush. But for today's video, with this being a beginner friendly video, I just wanted to get something that I could pick up at my local hardware store. can see as I'm painting I'm doing my best to go to paint in the direction of the wood grain um, that will just apply the paint the best so in areas that I can I am going against the wood grain making sure to get it all. When working with a white paint on top of primer it can be kind of hard to tell the difference between the two so just make sure you're going slow and really looking at where you've painted so you don't miss any spots. I did apply two coats of the linen white making sure to sand in between each coat as well. Now that the paint has dried, it's time to put on the top coat. Top coating is so important whether you use a wax or a polyurethane. Today I'm using the Minwax polyacry Polyacrylic oh my gosh, in um, clear matte. This is my favorite. I think it's the easiest to apply. Um, you do want to make sure that you are working kind of fast with this material because it does dry up fast and you don't want any clumps, so take your time and just really watch what you're doing. If you are finding that you're having a hard time putting on the top coat, you can try um, applying it with a sponge brush. I know I did that when I first started out and it was easier, but now that I'm a little bit more advanced, I think it's a little bit quicker doing it with a brush.
I'm making sure to apply it everywhere. You wanna make sure that it's top coated. It will help prevent everyday wear and tear. Um, just giving it that extra layer of protection. So it's important to do this on every piece, whether it is, like I said, a wax or another, like an oil or as I'm using here, a polyacrylic. We are in the final steps here. We are just finishing up the piece, applying the last of the top coat, and then I'm off camera going to put on the hardware. I decided to spray paint it gold, so you guys are gonna see that in just a quick second here. And finally, it's time for the reveal. Please ignore some of the wall behind there and the lack of paint in some spots. We are currently working on the backdrop, but these pieces are finished and they turned out absolutely beautiful. The piece is all finished. It's looking absolutely great. I love the chic, the modern white and gold accents. I think that is a perfect combination. Um, I would do it on every flip if I could, but there's got to be a variety. You know, people want different things. Um, I think they turned out great. We took these cheap IKEA nightstands and flipped them around and made them look gave them a complete upgrade, made them look like a higher quality piece and completely redesigned them for a modern home. Now, if I wasn't doing a beginner friendly video, I do think that I would have done a pretty whitewash on these because the wood grain was so prominent and so beautiful that I think that would have looked perfect. So if I ever run across these again, or like the matching dresser to it, I definitely am going to be trying out that whitewash. Um, whitewashing is so beautiful and I will be doing a video like that soon if you're not familiar with those terms. But that is going to end today's video, you guys. Please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Let's hit 700 subscribers and our goal is going to be 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I also wanted to mention for you guys that I did set up a buy me a coffee. Um, don't feel obligated to, you know, support me in that way by buying me a coffee. But if that is something that you are interested in by supporting me, um, the link for that will be in the description box down below. So with that, you guys, this is going to end today's video. Please check out some of my other videos that I picked out for you guys. I think that you will like, you'll like them if you like this video. So go ahead and check some of those out. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. See you later. Bye.